This is the story of a girl who never gave up and has lived an extraordinary life. A baby was born and she was as perfect as they come. As she grew on, her health slowly began to cause problems. Constant ear infections and vomiting took over a large portion of her childhood. People always made up cute names for how skinny she was, not realizing there was a bigger issue. As she grew older, things began to get worse. Unfortunately, due to her mother being on public assistance and being sick herself, they did not investigate further. Around 11 years old, her mother became gravely ill with cancer, and by age 12, her mother had died. She ended up being put into a facility to help with the grieving process the following year, which had shed some light onto issues we didn't know about, like hypoglycemia and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome which were the cause of a lot of Dorothy's health issues, but there was no further testing or treatment done at that time. Suffering with vomiting, at age 17 she had her gallbladder removed, and a few years later her appendix. It seemed things would just get worse from here. She started having worsening intestinal issues, and the doctors started prescribing medications to try to ease some symptoms, but it was not very effective. She stayed strong and hopeful, but they put her on beta blockers to slow her heart down and ran all sorts of tests. They said she had POTS and would have to learn how to live her life differently. Dorothy at this point had two children and a strong will to live. She had went to therapy for a while to help her learn new ways to cope with her illnesses and did her best to move on. In 2004, after she had her second child, they discovered a blood clot in her leg and a few years later in her lung. They put her on long-term Lovenox shots as her blood thinners because she would not reach a therapeutic level on warfarin. In 2007, things took a major turn for the worse. She went into the hospital for an EP study as they were hopeful to do an ablation to help fix issues with her heart. While at the hospital, Dorothy began having seizures and had a stroke due to a blood clot. They also found her cortisol level was 0.5. She was diagnosed with a secondary adrenal insufficiency. They offered to place her in hospice at this time. Dorothy, still in the ICU, was struggling with seizures and to keep her stats normal. During her time in ICU, they discovered she was left side paralyzed and pregnant with twins. This was an amazing yet horrifying time. She didn't know if she should be happy or scared, but she did know that she was ready to take on whatever challenges life put in her path. Half paralyzed and already a mom of two, she continued with a pregnancy that was incredibly high risk. As the pregnancy continued, things became much harder for her. Seizures were more frequent and hard to control, requiring hospitalization for many months. Finally, around 32 weeks, the twins were born and Dorothy's seizures stopped. The twins were 3 pounds 7 ounces and 3 pounds 13 ounces. They were placed in the NICU immediately for evaluation and care. They were born via C-section and the surgery appeared to have gone well. After surgery, Dorothy was having uncontrollable pain and was ignored. This caused a silently deadly situation as they discharged her prematurely. Halfway home, she received a call from the hospital saying she must come back because her blood count was only a six. She would go in and receive two units of blood to be sent home. Over the next few months, she convinced her doctor to do a CT scan, and they would find a large hematoma in her abdomen, which eventually was removed. During that surgery, they punctured her bladder, which required her to have a Foley catheter in for months. Over the next few years, Dorothy would continue to receive medical care and they would continue to tell her she is a mystery. They received diagnosis after diagnosis and none of them were correct. This led to many years of torture and no progress to be made. She struggled to survive, yet no one could figure out why. And there's so many diagnoses like asthma, antiphospholipid syndrome, lupus. There are so many pages of notes and diagnosis she didn't know which way to turn and where to go, but she never gave up. For a period of time, she kind of did in a different way, but in her opinion, those were her best years. Dorothy had one last child and all went well. During her pregnancy, she only needed her beta blockers and stomach medications. The child was born, all was good. She recovered from her C-section quickly and was able to go back to being a mom. 
As years went by, she saw less and less doctors and things started to be great. The only trouble was the heart and the asthma, but she was a warrior and nothing could stop her. Overtaking any challenge in her way, she was the brightest fire burning. She was able to reduce her medications to a minimal amount and was even able to work for a while. She even owns her own businesses. Dorothy would begin to start rapidly losing weight and having hives in 2011. At this point, she had numerous blood clots. She stopped being able to keep food down and lost over 100 pounds in less than six months. They diagnosed her with gastroparesis and put her on medications that could help her. This did buy her some time. In the following years, she would suffer through extreme digestive pain and nothing was getting better. In 2012, she had her tubes tied. In 2019, Dorothy had what seemed to be a heart attack and a stroke. She collapsed and was able to walk, speak, or even move on her own. She could only describe it as her heart fluttered and she passed out. From here in, she was in and out of the ER frequently, and they discovered a pulmonary embolism. The ER chose to not treat it and sent her home. She suffered for months trying to survive on her own. She was unable to keep food down again, and then they discovered her blood counts were very, very low. Silent but deadly, her uterus was killing her. She didn't have xenomyosis. This caused her to bleed frequently in large amounts and be in extreme pain. She was hurting for years, but the doctors always told her it was normal. Finally, she found someone who knew what was wrong, but this doctor couldn't fix it. Her case was too complicated for a small hospital, and she needed to fight to find someone who would be willing to perform a hysterectomy. It was her only choice for survival. She couldn't find a doctor and was requiring weekly infusions to keep her blood levels close to normal. Fortunately, eventually she did find a doctor, and within a month of meeting, they were able to get her uterus removed. Her post-op weeks were incredibly difficult, but she did her best to make it through. Over the next two years, Dorothy continued to search for doctors who can help, but they usually end up not knowing what to do. Her sister paid to have her DNA done since insurance wasn't going to cover it. It did give us some answers, but a lot of questions. We did find that Dorothy has the MTHFR gene, but we cannot self-interpret the rest of the DNA, and it requires a professional. Today, Dorothy is still struggling with her medical issues, recently diagnosed with pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. Her eosinophil counts are high with no reason. Vitamin D remains low despite weekly vitamin D. She lives a difficult life. Sometimes she could do things a normal 36-year-old can, but the majority of the time she can't. Try my best over the next few moments to explain system by system, followed by medications and diagnosis she has received over time. Gastric, inability to eat, nausea, bowel obstructions that are recurring, diarrhea, vomiting, reflux, abdominal pain, and cramping. Pulmonary, sudden throat closing, wheezing, chest tightness, and anaphylaxis. Cardiac, PACs and PBCs palpitations that leave her weak and unable to walk, pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. Dermatological, skin ulcers that take months to heal, scars that reopen often. Vascular, blood rushing in the legs, arms, and chest. Neurological, unbearable headaches, auras, dizziness. Endocrine, low blood sugar, constant need for prednisone to resolve other bodily issues. Hematology, hypercoagulable state of undetermined origin, microembolisms. Muscular, intermittent muscle spasms and weakness. Skeletal, pain in the right knee, inability to bear weight on the right knee intermittently. Her lips swell intermittently. Her daily medications include atenolol, prednisone, hyoscyamine, ibuprofen, benadryl, cetirizine, famotidine, reglan, folate, and intermittently vitamin D. Her diet consists of mostly liquid, generally soda. She had been asking for nutritional help for a long time, but only recently was heard by her primary doctor. He's new to her case and has been a great help since they met him. He works out the issues one by one and offers plans that are solid and goals within reach. But now, he needs help from someone who may be able to offer a diagnosis and a treatment plan. Her diagnoses are 
asthma, SVT, POTS, gastroparesis, lupus, antiphospholipid syndrome, hypercoagulable state of undetermined origin, adrenal insufficiency, hypoglycemia, syncope, previous stroke, hemiparesis, abdominal pain, SVT, heart palpitations, vitamin deficiency, intracranial hypotension, acute and traceable headaches, disorder of the adrenal gland, idiopathic eosinophilia, macrocytosis without anemia, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, inflammatory autoimmune disorder of the skin, presyncope, dyslipidemia, peripheral eosinophilia, colitis, pulmonary arteriovenous malformation, restless leg syndrome, and folate deficiency.